Hey there everyone, this is Danielle checking out Tunic or Tunic or however you wish to pronounce it. Uh, this is a new game, it released three days ago. Uh, it's ma it's uh, made by some people I'm not familiar with, but it's published by Finji, who are the same publishers who published Not in the Woods and Chicory, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> uh, knowing the kind of games that Finji tend to publish, like another game from them, uh, not, not literally made by them, but published by them, is is just a very exciting thing. Um, I'm going to check it out and see how I like it. <laughs> uh, I don't know a lot about this game, I know a little bit. Uh, you're playing as a little, like, fox who is wearing a tunic similar to the one Link wears in The Legend of Zelda. It plays kind of like Zelda, uh, but it's also apparently a bit sort of Dark Soulsy. It's got that kind of... When you die, you lose some money and you have to get back to the spot where you died to get the money sort of thing going on. Which I don't love. Um, that's a mechanic I don't tend to like, so I actually asked about that on the Finji Discord before I bought the game, and apparently there are accessibility options so you can uh, avoid that sort of problem if that is something that bothers you. I forgot to close my bedroom door just a second. <laughs> We should have paused the recording, but I didn't, so go off, I guess. <laughs> uh, so I picked this up on Steam. It's also available on Epic, Itch, and on both of the current Xbox and So the Xbox One and the series, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know if they're going to more platforms besides that, but uh, the Steam and the Steam and Itch versions and all that are both Windows and Mac. And I'm guessing it'll run on Linux with Proton, but I haven't tried that. Uh, I'm usually playing with a Pro Controller right now. They do recommend you use a controller rather than playing with keyboard. Uh, I haven't got any custom mappings enabled. This is just the default settings with just the Pro Controller connected to my computer. So we'll see how that goes. Have a look at the options. I did have to press the B button to enter the options, not the A button. So it's treating it... It's treating this more or less as though it's like an Xbox uh, 360 type of controller. Which is not a big deal, but... Worth mentioning. I uh, got audio volume. There's a number of languages available, as you can see. Oddly enough, they are all labelled in English, as you can also see, uh, which is a bit strange. Since generally, when you pick a language, the languages are labelled in the native language. So I'm not sure why it's like that. It's strange. I uh, got some graphics settings. I set this up already so that it would be easy to record, like made it borderless and stuff, but. All the basic stuff is in here if you want to mess with it. Uh, you can remap the keyboard controls. You don't seem to be able to remap the gamepad controls, which is a bit strange. Uh, like, because I have a gamepad plugged in and there's no options for that. So, you probably need like some third-party software if you want to play with the gamepad and remap the controls. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, accessibility is here. I can turn on the vibration. I can turn down the screen shake, the motion blur, the damage flash. I will turn that one down, because that sounds like it might be a photosensitivity trigger. Uh, you also got no fail mode, which I think means your character can't die, and no stamina restrictions. I think that's kind of like the stamina in Dark Souls that you use when you use blocks and dodges and stuff like that, but I haven't started the game yet, so I'm not sure. I might mess with this later. But yeah, um, hearing that these options are in the game is one of the reasons I was still very eager to get it, despite hearing that it has the Dark Souls style death punishment. So, <laughs> let's dive in and see how it goes. Uh, new game. Got a little roly cube in the corner. I don't know if this bottom right corner where my face is will be occupied with other stuff. I will move the camera if I need to. Uh, I saw the trailer for this, so I know the game is very pretty. Uh, Got this really nice isometric style and a little fox. Okay, so I can move around uh, with the analog stick in all directions. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like a full 360 degree sort of thing rather than 8 directional or 16 or whatever. Uh, I can also tilt it a tiny bit if I want to move a tiny bit. You cannot move with the D-pad. I'm pressing the D-pad now and nothing happens. I'm guessing that will eventually be mapped to something because I did see it in the... Um, keyboard controls mapping section. The face buttons all do nothing at the moment. The L button gives me like a stats menu, I guess. R button does nothing. 
that L tilts my camera a little bit. I'm guessing that's going to be yeah, I can strafe. So that that's like um Z targeting in in actual Zelda games. And ZR does nothing. Plus lets me pause. Minus does nothing. The right stick also does nothing. Uh, clicking the right stick makes it wobble the camera a little bit. I don't know what that's about. I assume it'll come up. Apparently I don't have a sword or anything, so all I can really do is just walk for a little bit. Okay, I thought standing on this platform might do something, but it didn't. Not sure what that represents yet. Clicking the left stick does nothing, by the way. Mailbox? Oh, treasure chest. Hello. Uh, B button. Uh, I got a stick. I also got an achievement saying a stick. Press L. Oh, I see. There's my stick. Oh, okay. So all three of the top of these buttons, Y, X, A, are equip buttons. So I can equip my stick, and then I can whack stuff with it. But I could also equip it with one of the other two buttons if I wished. Uh, I got one little twinkly thing. A couple more little twinkly things. I'm guessing those are like money or something similar to money. Okay, uh, and yeah, this is like uh, locking on in a Zelda game. It's pretty much what I expected. Uh, probably can't go this way till I get like a better item or something. Maybe I'll just fix the bridge. We don't know. I'm noticing my default walking speed is a little slow, but I'm guessing I'll get like a dodge roll or something. Oh, I do have a dodge roll. I just pressed B while moving, and yeah, I have a dodge roll. And you can see it used a little bit of my green bar. So I'm guessing that's stamina, and it's it's fairly similar to, you know, Dark Souls. <laughs> okay. Come here. Not really sure how to heal myself yet, uh, so I'm trying to avoid taking any damage. I'm guessing the pink bar is my health. Uh, can I open this? No, I need like a key or something. Can I read this? Hero's Grave. I'm guessing I need to go that way to get a sword, uh, which I can't do yet because all I have is this rubbish stick. <laughs> Because it had a picture of a sword on the grave message there. These visuals, uh, the, the art style here reminds me a lot of Link's Remakening for the Switch. Like, the, the way it was sort of, looks a bit like a toy, kind of. Uh, I like it. I've heard this game is a lot longer than Link's Remakening as well, which is nice. Okay, I took damage from that blue one there. I don't know how to heal yet, so I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem. <laughs> this say. Uh, something Town? This game has a lot of stuff you can't read because it's in uh, the, like, interesting native language of the world or whatever. I'm not sure if it becomes readable or we learn how to read that, that script later, but at the moment I've got no idea what it says. Uh, some happy little frogs. Yeah, I can see a treasure chest there, but I don't think I can reach it. At least not yet. My health is not regenerating. I wasn't really expecting it to, but I haven't seen any hearts dropped or anything like that either, so I'm really not sure how I heal. I wonder if this is relevant. Okay, I found like a little fire. It's now, oh, it's... Okay, I'm guessing this is like a... This is like a, um... Like a campfire in Dark Souls. You, you, you sit here and it heals you, and also it's sort of like a checkpoint. Uh, when you come back, when, when you die, you spawn at the last one of those you've been to. Uh, I can't cut these down because I'll have a stick. Once I have a sword, I assume I can go that way. Uh, no? Okay. okay. So I got a key. <laughs> I couldn't read the prompt because it was written in that weird script that I can't read. Uh, this little telescope here lets me look at what's down there, but I can't actually go down there yet because these these big bushes are in the way. I think that key probably will let me open the hero's grave, which is back this way. Uh, 
Uh, enemies seem to have quite a significant tell for their attacks, so once I get a little bit of a, a hang of the movement, I should be able to dodge more effectively. It's like they're sort of flashing before they flip at me. I don't know if you're noticing that. Back to the door. The music's nice. I can just mash the button a couple times to get like a combo going on. Uh, I'm gonna say okay. It's a little weird using B as the interaction like okay button. But it's not bad, it's just a little strange. What's this? Uh, okay. Beginning your adventure. Oh. Oh yeah, I remember seeing some of this in, um, I think this might have been in the trailers. You get to find, like, these cute little things that are, like, pages of the game's manual, as though it's like a classic Zelda. It's it's extremely adorable, as you can see. Uh, let me see, ready to equipment. Uh, some of this I can't read, and I think that's by design. I still can't tell what the... Uh, what that thing is, for example, because it's a question mark. Prize, treasure, health, stamina. I'll eventually have magic points as well. Uh, important, if I run out of stamina, everything hurts way more when I'm tired. Focus preview? Magic potion? Yeah, I can see, I can see it's pointing to other pages of the manual, but I only have pages 10 and 11. I assume I need to ring these two bells, the east and west bell, and this is like a checklist. Interesting. Oh, we're getting a bit of frame rate. Okay, frame rate's back. It might be because I have my browser open in the background. I probably should have closed it. <laughs> uh, go up this ladder. This is very pretty. Very, very pretty. What's this? Something I can't read. It looks like a weather vane, so it's possible I'll get to like summon a bird out of that and then fast travel with it. This is very Zelda. Zelda with a fault. Okay. What's in here? Ah, oh, just a bunch of money. That's alright. I assume money is useful, although I haven't found a purpose for it yet. That's 67 money now, apparently. I can't go that way because of the bushes I can't cut down. I was expecting the Hero's Grave cave to have a sword in it, but it had a piece of the manual instead, which is strange. <laughs> uh, let's go this way. Looks like it's been blocked off to be like pretty clearly a linear right at the beginning here. Not a whole lot of ways I can go because of these trees blocking all the paths. I imagine it will open up a lot later. Like, Zelda games tend to do that. And this is definitely giving me Zelda game vibes for no doubt reasons that were completely intentional. <laughs> uh, what if I go this way towards the waterfall? Uh, oh, I can go through these, these trees. Oh, here we go. Here's a chest. And this one. Uh, like a hat or something? What is that? I can equip it. I, I don't know what that'll do. I only have one, so I'm kind of reluctant to try it. Hmm. It, 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 it's very flavorful that everything is written in the game's, like, esoteric script that the player can't read, but... It, it is a little inconvenient to a new player. <laughs> uh, let's see. I already went in there. Did I go over here? I don't think I did. Oh no, I did, but the, then I couldn't go any further that way. That's right. Uh, oh, the mailbox. Can I press B on it? I shouldn't have said empty because nothing in the mailbox. Uh, oh, I can go this way. Hang on. Do this 
something over here. Oh, this is just the other side of that part. Okay. So that'll become a shortcut once I can actually cut down these little bushes instead of get blocked by them. Where do you want me to go is my question. Uh, if I go back to the um, bonfire, which was this direction. I'm definitely getting really strong Link's from Awakening vibes from the way all this looks. Which is great, because that game looked amazing. It was just incredibly short. <laughs> okay, what's this? Some sort of magic door? Um... Oh, it took me to, like, a challenge realm or something? I'm a ghost fox now. Interesting. Are these, like, the voids, like, in Blue Fire, or...? This game's not a platformer, so probably not exactly like the voids in Blue Fire, but... I'm not sure if there'll be a bunch of these, or if this is just, like, the first one. Like, the only, like this is the only one, and then you'll progress to doing something else later. I guess we'll see. Uh, do I want to interact with these? I think I do. Uh, yeah, it looks like that was worth doing. <laughs> uh, another one over here. Uh, let's talk to this tuning fork. There we go. Or if you like this, a tunic fork. <laughs> okay, and that'll open this door. Okay. I believe that symbol with like the three coloured, uh, Hexagons is like the game's like logo essentially. I've seen it uh, in a couple different places on the Findy Discord. It seems like it's at least a significant thing to the game. Okay, now I'm just sort of walking on nothing. Oh, I don't have a stamina bar here. I can just keep rolling. What is this? Okay, there's like a an, another wolf or fox. No, another fox. Wrapped in like a, a dodecahedron or something. Is that like my fox parent? Am I rescuing a parent? It's like they're a bigger fox than me. That's the impression I'm getting. I'm assuming. I'm guessing a lot of this game's story will be told through vibes rather than actual words. Which I, which I like. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, I'm back and my stamina's been drained. Oh, but it's back now. Okay, so did me going in there achieve anything? Will I have unlocked something I didn't have before? Doesn't really look like it. Like, I still have the same sword. Hmm... I could try going through the door again, but that might just do nothing, or it might replay the cutscene. Neither of which are very helpful. I'll give it a try, just in case. Sealed forever. Well, that answers that. <laughs> um, Chuck down another checkpoint. I'm assuming it's a checkpoint. Like, I haven't died yet, but that's just my guess. Oh, did I go this way? Oh yeah, this is the way to town. And I can't go this way because these bushes are in the way. Right. Right, 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 right. I'm guessing there'll be like a health potion or something I can use rather than having to visit this every time, but it's not exactly hard to just go and visit it for the time being. And yeah, enemies respawn, which is exactly how the bonfires work in Dark Souls. You, you sit at a bonfire and rest, you heal, but also all the enemies come back that you previously defeated. Uh, okay, let's try going back towards the uh, tomb area. 
maybe there's something over here that's open now because I did that other thing. Uh, this room doesn't look any different. I suppose I should try using my little fox face item and see what it does, but I'm concerned about wasting it given I only have one. I would assume it's not possible to get stuck by wasting an, an item like that because that would just be real bad for the game, <laughs> but I'm just reluctant. leads to this treasure chest I already got. They mentioned on the Discord that the game is about like figuring out what you're supposed to do a lot of the time. Oh! Oh, that's what that does. You just smash it and some stuff comes out. It's like a like a piggy bank? I I'm guessing if I used it near some enemies it would also like hurt them, but I, I didn't, so that didn't happen. <laughs> This is a bit of a confusing game. Um, can I look at my instruction manual again now that I've got the first page? Or does it not show up anywhere? I don't know. I, I don't know what I would press to make it come back up. Oh, minus. Minus now opens the instruction manual. I only found the one page though, so I don't know a whole lot about this game. I must admit it is extremely charming to have a game where you collect the pieces of the game's instruction booklet as you progress. Th that, that is just extremely adorable. Uh, if I go back this way towards where I started, I, I have this uh, stick now that I didn't have before. I might be able to interact with things that I couldn't. Uh, that doesn't respond to me hitting my stick around. But maybe down here there's something? No. I'm guessing these will eventually work as like fast travel points. That's just the way, that's just the vibe I'm getting. Um, eventually. I can see another piece of the instruction manual down there, which would be really helpful. Uh, hang on, is that a ladder? Can I go down there? Uh, and that's not a ladder. Hmm. I go that way because the bridge is broken. I go back into this room, is there anything else? No, it's just, just the chest I already got. And the pots and stuff did not respawn, so... Like, it looks like some of the sources of money don't come back. Just a little bit annoying. Uh, yeah, I can't get across there. I'm just not sure where the game wants me to go once I've done that first, uh, I guess, Dream World cutscene. But I don't think that unlocked anything. Unless going this way will now do something better. And it didn't give me an item when I went there either, so... I don't have access to anything I didn't before, as far as I can tell. I can't roll off this edge, can I? No, that would be too simple. <laughs> I can see another one of those yellow platforms, so if they are fast travel platforms, then like it'd be able to I'd be able to get down there using fast travel, but I, I can't get to the platform in order to activate the fast travel. Uh and I don't even know if that's what they do, it could be something else. Hmm. I'm just a little confused. Let me see. Focus. Ocean. Ready to equipment. I can see some stuff in the equipment there that I'd love to have and don't currently have. Uh, okay. It sounds like I can do something in Hero's Grave, which is the area I can get to, so it might make sense to go that way. Because that's where that doorway goes to, the one down here that I had to unlock. I'm kind of hoping I'll die at least once because I want to see how punitive it is, like how much money you lose and how difficult it is to recover. Uh, 
but the combat hasn't hasn't yet been hard enough for that to happen. So, um, hmm. If I go this way, is there anything else I can get to besides that one treasure chest? If I already got, it doesn't look like it. it doesn't look like that leads anywhere else. Hang on. Hang on, I can go this way. How did I not notice that? I can I can easily go this way into the east forest. <laughs> oh, I'm silly. East Bell Tower. Okay, so I'm probably gonna find the East Bell and maybe I don't know if I'm gonna be able to ring it yet because it looked like you had to do multiple things according to the booklet. But uh I assume this is part of my objective. Also, here's part of the manual. Uh yes. Oh, okay, there's the controller. Um, the R will be the potion button once I have potions. And the ZL and Z... ZR? It says ZT for some reason. Oh, I see, look. It's the next page. It, it just attaches onto the one I already had. Okay. Uh, I flip it over to page 13. Yeah, B is the action button. It looks like I can do a little roll or a bigger roll if I hold the button. And ZR will be the shield button once I have the shield, which I don't currently. My rolls all seem to be the same size regardless of whether I hold the button. I might need the shield to make that different as well. Uh, let's try going up here first, I suppose. Uh... I don't really know if there's one way that's better to go than the other way. Okay, I can see a tuning fork up there, like the ones I saw in my dream. I assume I want to get up there, but uh, we'll have to go this way first, I suppose. That's alright, I can manage that. Hello. Uh, I'm here. Oh, uh, the, the ladder is broken. Okay. Let me just hit the save point. Thank you. So I guess I'm stuck down here now until I can find another way to backtrack. East Forest. Oh, hey, it's these, like, jumpy guys. Uh, there's a well? Took a hit there, but apart from that, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, I can look at the well and it says something that I can't read. Oh, uh, you have lasers. Please do not blast me with lasers. Okay, we're doing alright. We're doing alright. What does this sign say? Hero's Grave. Oh, we haven't actually gotten to Hero's Grave yet. That little cave we got to was just like on the way. Guardhouse 1. There's a lot of enemies in there, and I think I want to head to Hero's Grave first. I really do want a sword. Let's keep going this way. Hello. Oh, jeez. I'm taking a lot of damage from those guys. It should be okay, there's a bonfire just here. Oh, another oh, piece of the instructions. But yeah, this is definitely a game about discovering what the game is about, so... <laughs> that's really cool. Let's add this to my manual. Uh, okay, this is the next page. 14, ZL target lock. Face your adversaries. B, focus and evade. ZT, focus and block. Look it over, understanding stamina points. Invulnerability while there's dust. Okay. You can always attack even without stamina. Stability. Okay, if I if my HP drops below 25%, I get knocked over by the sound of things. And I want to watch out for that. Uh, and I believe I take I take more damage when I'm at low stamina.
not gonna lie, I really love the aesthetic of collecting pieces of the game's instruction book. That's that's fantastic. Check out the enclosed instruction book. Oh, I got uh, a fruit. I'm guessing that's like a healing item of some kind. This is another one of those yellow pedestals, so it's possible there'll be a fast travel point here once I figure out how to use it. Here is grave is that way. I'm a little curious to see what goes in these other directions, though. Walk in here. Is this like Guardhouse 2? Yes, it is. Um, I don't think I can get through here because I don't. I can't cut these bushes, so I'll have to come back. East Forest. I can go this way. Ah, uh, these guys look a bit tough, considering how far into the game I am. It might be a bit much for me. Or I might be good at the game and not take a single hit. It could be that. <laughs> okay, uh, I can get the chest, I think? Can I get it from the side? Oh, I don't need to. I can just stand in front of it like this. Okay, it was just a bit more money, which is, which is nice, but not super helpful. And then I can't keep going because the bushes are blocking off that path. Okay, let's head towards Hero's Grave, which is this way. And smash these. Give me a little bit more money. What do I do for money? 169. Nice. <laughs> oh, gosh. Pass to Hero's Grave. Okay. Not one of these slimy friends. Ow. Ow. Okay, let's try eating this and see if it's healing. I assume that's what it does. Yeah, it's a little bit of healing. Okay, I have to assume there'll be more than one of those, because... Yeah, <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> okay. I'm not quite sure what no fail mode will actually do. It might just be if you run out of health, it just sort of comes back. I'm curious. I'll turn it on to see what it does. Like, probably once I've died at least once, I'll just switch on the accessibility modes and see how they work. Just for the posterity of understanding the game a little bit more. Yeah, these guys aren't that tough because they're so slow. You can just roll backwards and you're fine. I, take, I say as I take damage. Okay, we're good. The combat definitely does feel a bit Dark Souls-y. Uh, Alright, I understand why people described it that way. Uh, I'm having more fun with it, at least because I'm a cute fox instead of having to be this weird undead thing, which is how, I, how Dark Souls works. If you suck at it anyway, which I do. Uh, this is like a big lever? Yeah. Once that thing, that opens that gate. Awesome. My health is very low. I am hoping I see another bonfire soon. Or at least something that heals me. Oh, that works too. <laughs> it's the sword. Come here, sword. Yes. A sword! Okay, so... Oh, I still have the stick and the sword. Interesting. Uh, I might need the stick for certain things that the sword doesn't work for. Like, I don't know, maybe I need to carry a fire around and the sword's made of metal, so that won't work. But yeah, you can see I can now cut these bushes down, which will uncut up a lot of paths. I imagine it does more damage too, which will make the combat a little bit easier. Uh, okay. I can also go up this way now, because that path was blocked off. And go and see what that is. Nice. Little treasure. Might just be money, but oh, it's just money. It's alright. Okay. okay. Keep going this way. Anything over here? Yes. Another treasure chest. Oh! It's got one of those in it. Still not sure if you're supposed to use those as like emergency bombs or if they're literally just like treasure boxes and you just break them and get the treasure. 
it's not super clear. Uh, I would like to go up there, but it looks like I might need to come in from a different direction to reach that treasure. Like, I might need to be on top of the ledge when I enter this room. So let's uh, backtrack a little bit. Okay, back in East Forest. I believe there was another bonfire just over here, so I'm going to hit that. Because if nothing else, my health is extremely low, and I would like it not to be. <laughs> so this is effectively the game's first dungeon, I think. And, like, the dungeon item is the sword, because you couldn't cut the bushes before, and now you can. Okay, yeah, my combat is a lot better with this thing than without it, so... I'm a lot more capable. <laughs> Whoa! Holy crap! Uh, achievement. It uses stamina. I'm not sure what uses stamina, but I got an achievement. Okay, yeah, my combat is a lot stronger now. I can blow away the enemies with a good wacky whack whack, which is nice. I don't think it's doing more damage, but it like has more knockback, so it still has the effect of giving me a bit a bit like better combat than I had before. Interesting. I think I think the damage is the same. It's a little hard to tell. Looking forward to getting a shield, but this is definitely an upgrade on before. <laughs> okay, I can flip this thing. Another one of these uh, handy dandy lovers that open doors. I'm not sure if this is the way the game wants me to go, but honestly, it probably doesn't matter that much. As long as I'm going somewhere, I'll probably find something interesting. Guardhouse 1. Oh, I'm in a, in a different bit of Guardhouse 1, see? That's, that's where I, I was before, and now I'm up here. Look another one of these neat levers. Oh, and it makes a stairway, so it's like a shortcut back to the first part. Very nice. Also, I got a piece of something? Oh, I see. I'm guessing it's like a piece of heart, because I got- it says one out of three. So, once I have three of them, presumably I get something nice. Possibly more health, possibly something else. Depends how this game works. Uh, are you the boss? Yes. Oh god. Okay, that's my first death. Uh... Okay, so I dropped some money. I don't know how much. Oh, I went back here. Uh, I was expecting to go directly back to the bonfire, but maybe this happens just the first time you die or something? I'm working on rescuing you, Fox, uh, Erend? Fox, enormous partner? I, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> Fox family member, let's say. Okay, yeah, what just happened is the achievement I just got, and I'm back here again, and... I don't know how much money I lost, but I don't think it was very much. Uh, but I opened up that shortcut as well, so if I go this way, I can get into Guardhouse 1 a lot more quickly. Okay, yeah, this, this does do more damage because those guys were taking multiple hits and now they're not, so... This definitely is upgraded damage of what I had before. Which is nice. Uh, so yeah, I can go up there to go to where I was, but I can also go up here. Uh, which I couldn't- which I could do before, but didn't. And see what's in this direction. Probably should go back to where I died and get my money back, but I don't think I lost very much, so I don't really care that much. Uh... Oh, more treasure. What have we here? Okay, that's like a health potion. Press the R button. 
Oh, I'm guessing this works exactly like an Estus Flask, which is the Dark Souls health potion. Like, you can drink it whenever, but you only replenish it when you use a bonfire. So, you have to be a bit careful about where you consume your healing. And I'm guessing I can get more than one health potion as well, because again, that's how that game works. Okay, so let's come back in here. Okay, there's my little ghost. Okay, so I talked to the ghost. I lost 20 money. And I can get it back. I think that's an extremely reasonable way to design this. Um, as you may know, I adore Super Mario Odyssey. In that game, uh, you drop 10 coins when you die. <laughs> and you can get them back. This is feeling more or less the same, and that makes me happy. Uh, in Dark Souls and in... Um, Hollow Knight and stuff like that, you lose all your money. Uh, unless you can go back to your little ghost and get the money back, in which case it's gone. Uh, so, the way this, this particular game is designed, I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> uh, let me see here. I suppose I need to kill the guard captain. I haven't really seen a reason to yet, so I might just keep looking around and see what else I can find. Yeah, you get like nine money from killing one enemy, and you drop twenty when you die. So, it, it's it's not a very harsh punishment, which makes me happy. It may get harsher as the game progresses. I don't know. Okay, that guy does a lot of damage. I'm not quite sure if there's like a reason for that, or if it's just that particular enemy is just mean. Okay, you drink the health potion. It doesn't heal you much. I'm guessing there's a way to upgrade it, but by default, yeah, that is not a lot of healing. Uh, I got bombs? I think those are bombs. Looks like bombs anyway. Okay, let's just try to dodge that guy and just try to get to the bonfire, because, um, my god. Okay, okay we're good, we're good. We're good. We're good, we're good. On fire. Healed up. Okay. I, I think fighting the guard captain is more or less what I want to do now. I like how you see their health bars if you lock on. I think that's a nice way of doing it. It's not too obtrusive. Uh, but if you need that information, like, it's there for you. Okay, I rolled towards them, which is just completely wrong. <laughs> Messed that one up. Uh, I took a hit. I probably want to go back. Uh, I want to go into the boss battle with full health, if I can muster it. So, tuck this down. I took a hit again, fighting little slimes. I do want to switch on the no-fail mode and see what that does. And also the infinite stamina thing. Uh, let me see, instant options, accessibility. Let's just switch both of these on and see what they do. I'm guessing no stamina restrictions is just... Yeah, it never goes down, so I can just keep rolling and rolling forever. Uh, no-fail mode, we have to die to find out what that does. So let's go into the boss battle and see what happens when I not die. <laughs> I don't even how frustrating the game is, I might just play with it. I might I might play with uh, no fail mode on, or I might not. We'll see how I feel. Okay, the guard captain is not that hard, actually. Unless I've been taking hits and not noticing because of no fail mode. Okay, yeah, I'm not taking any damage. No fail mode just turns off damage. Uh, I'm gonna toggle that off because I just want to see how much damage he's doing. Barely any? <laughs> Maybe none? <laughs> Alright. Okay, so the game. If you, if you want to enjoy the really interesting story and approach to story that the game has, you can switch these on uh, to get basically invulnerability. 
uh, which is nice. Or just like infinite stamina, but not invulnerability if you prefer. I was kind of expecting it to be more of a you can lose health, but like you don't die, something else happens. But okay, that's two potions now, which is nice. And then I can go up here. Oh yeah, I fell down a, a pit or whatever to get in here, so that makes sense. Oh. Let's go, little fox. Ooh, it's a bit dark. A bit spooky. Oh hey, it's this thing. Ring. Ding. So is that the E spell done? I suppose so. This is just like part of what I had to do. Oh, but I can throw this down to make like a rope. So I can climb down. Oh, that's nice. Now I can leave easily. No, let me check the manual here. Is it, like, checked off? No. Maybe I haven't done it? No, guard captain. Yeah, I beat the guard captain, so... I guess I rung the east bell. I was kind of expecting the game to, like, show little check marks. It looks like a checklist, but... I, I suppose they didn't want to make the manual look all messy. Which is fine, I guess. What's in here? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what that is, but I got it. It shows question marks, so I suppose I'm not supposed to know what it is yet. <laughs> Around this way. Oh, hang on, I can't go any further. Hmm. I guess it just wants me to have a look at what's over there, but not necessarily go there yet. Hmm. Can I equip this thing to a button? No, I can't. So it's like some sort of key item that I will maybe have the purpose of revealed to me later. In any case, if we leave the bell tower now, head back to the main world, uh, we can cut these down now, which allows us to travel a lot more places than I could before. I can get that page of the manual, for example. Let's have a look. Yes. Oh, it's one of these! It's a big old map! Oh, cool. Uh, this is page 28. It doesn't actually go with the, other, with the other pages I've managed to find. Lorm, a type of slime who just wants to be close to you. I don't by blocking. <laughs> I can't block yet, so that's not super helpful, but it's nice to have a big old map of the overworld like this. Alright, I went to East Forest, and let's zoom in. I started down here, then I went over this way. I think that little picture of the fox there is where I am. I don't know if it moves around or something. Uh, East Forest where I got my sword. Uh, the old house had the telescope on top of it, but I couldn't really access it just yet. I can see that the yellow panels are marked as question marks, so I'm guessing they'll become something a little more meaningful later. Can I get down there? Doesn't look like it. We've come from a different direction. Hey, a flippy thing. Let's flip it. <laughs> it's quite cute. And that makes some nice stairs, so we can go down here. Oh, it's a shortcut. Now I'm back here at the middle section where this thing is. Oh. Cool. 
once I find what you spend money on, I'll, I'll be able to know if losing 20 money is, like, more punitive than I thought it was. I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's, like, just a very reasonable and small amount of money, but... I can't really tell unless I know what things cost. But judging from the amount of money I've managed to collect just by playing through the first little bit of the game, it's probably not a lot. <laughs> I definitely want a shield, at least to block these ranged attacks from like these little frog guys. I don't think frog is the right word, the little, but they are hopping around, so. I love frogs. Hey, another piece of the manual. Let's add that to my collection. Page 16. That's the actual next page. Uh, no safety, low stability, hurt more. Yeah, when my. Oh, my damage is... Okay, so I can't block, I can't use special techs, I can fall over, and I take another 50% worth of damage. Okay, here we are. Sword, stick, shield, bomb. Oh, ice bomb, and then explosive bomb, and then fire bomb. The ones I found were fire bombs. Keys, fruits, hot pepper, ivy. That thing I found earlier was called an effigy. Lure, golden coin. Magic potion. Oh, the little, the little, uh, what was it? The, the little, like, key item, I didn't know what it was. It was like a little pink thingy. Hang on, I'll zoom in on it. That thing. That thing increases the effect of the health potion by the looks of things. Oh, and those little shards are like shards of a health potion. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, I haven't got any of those items yet, but I'll keep them in mind. And I haven't got page 20. They say that if you throw enough bombs, you'll get a prize, so don't be afraid to use them. Looks like someone's also sketched some extra information into the manual here, which is pretty cool. Uh, like, seriously, the finding pieces of the game's, like, uh, SNES-style instruction manual is one of the most charming things possible. It's, it's delightful. It's absolutely delightful. Uh, hello. Here's another chest I can get. Oh hey, another piece of a heart container. Or a potion, I guess. I don't know if my actual health ever, ever goes up or if I just get potions. I guess we'll see. Um, I'm guessing I need to get a certain item to activate these yellow panels and then there'll be some sort of fast travel thing, judging from the way they're positioned. Uh, can I interact with you? It looks like this one might be broken and won't do anything. Because, like, the stuff underneath it is cracked. Why are the guards still attacking me? I beat their captain. They don't have a boss anymore, they're free. <laughs> I suppose the same thing happens in Link to the Past. You kill Aghanim and then, like, the guards still get stronger? I'm taking a lot of damage. Have a drink. There we go. That's better. Um, not super sure where the game actually wants me to go next. It's kind of the charm of a game like this, I suppose. It's very much a... Sort of throw you into a world, tell you nothing, you gradually figure things out kind of game. Nice. I like it. Okay, you are a slightly stronger type of uh, guard, so let's deal with you. With care. You got a shield. I would like a shield, but I don't think you'll be able to take yours. It's a shame. right at this combat. Uh, I would like that piece of the manual, but only I can reach it. At least not yet. Kind of 
kind of a little hard to tell when you're taking damage. I know I turned off the damage flash in accessibility, but um, it's still a little vague. You must have like a unique sound effect or something. Yeah, I can open up this pathway. There we go, make a bit of a shortcut. Just take a little swig of my magic. Okay, I can see a key down there, which I definitely want. It is guarded by one of those guys that does way too much damage, is the only thing. Oh jeez. I don't have a shield. I don't have a shield! Oh no! Oh no! So the question is, do I still lose 20 or do I lose more? Like, it might scale based on how far you are in the game. If it does, that's a little annoying, but it also makes sense. <laughs> uh, let's have a little look in here, because I'm curious to see what the windmill does. Oh! Uh, hello. Oh, I see. I can buy things from you? Okay, so you sell... But yeah, I'd like more... Gold, another heart container or potion or whatever. You buy this too? Yes. And some explosives. So you're a shop. Uh, a very spooky sort of shop, but nonetheless you're a shop. <laughs> okay, and I noticed, yeah, the things are quite pricey. So, in the grand scheme of things, 20 money is not a lot of money, because a heart container costs like 300. I say heart container, it's a, it's a potion. <laughs> or a potion bottle, really. Because you, you, you buy the bottle and you get to fill it back up as much as you want. Okay. Come at me, come at me. Okay, so I opened the gate over here, so I should be able to get back in where I was relatively easily. Just over here somewhere. Is it down this here? Down here? I think it might have been down here. I'm having a little trouble learning the layout of the world, gotta be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that little booklet. Ah! Leave me alone. I really need a shield. Run away! <laughs> Okay, they can come up the stairs. I wasn't sure if they could. <sighs> okay. Okay. I was just around here somewhere where I died, so I was not. Yeah, there's my little little uh, ghosty. 22. Okay, so it does scale a little bit. Still quite uh, small in the grand scheme of things, though, so I'm not too bothered. Okay, that thing is scary. If I had a potion or something, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but I don't. There we go. Oh! Uh, I wasn't expecting that last part. <laughs> Just kind of exploded in my face. Uh, now I'm out of health again. And out of potions. Uh, a card? Maybe the cards give you more health eventually? I'm not really sure. 
there anything else that can heal me? No. I found that one fruit, but I ate it already. dealt with. Can I just grab the key out from under you, or do I have to actually fight you? Let's just run past you and go over here. Get some more treasure. This game is very pretty, by the way. I don't know if you noticed. But it's, it's super pretty. More money. Not exactly the easiest game, but like you can switch on the no damage mode if you wanna. Oh no! <laughs> Interesting. That doesn't tell you how much you. Oh, offer. One hundred. I don't know what that does. Hmm. I get like a second one by spending a hundred? Is that what that means? Or is it I can sell it for 100? I don't really want to sell it. I, I would like my health potions to keep getting better. It doesn't look like it's really practical to just run past your enemies in this game. Follow you. Many of them have projectile attacks. Also, automatic cannons. Oh my god. Oh my god, those cannons. They have a... a more range than I was anticipating. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Okay, I assume that means I lost the goat, the money, the money for my second ghost, but maybe I didn't. I don't know how this game works exactly. It might be like some games I've played, like it leaves multiple ghosts behind. Uh, for example, what was it called, Blasphemous? Uh, it would leave multiple like spirits you could go back and collect. Uh, but it also punished you by letting you have less health if you hadn't gotten gotten your spirits back. So. And this one doesn't seem to do that, so it may just be the one. Okay, did you guys get more powerful? Why are you shooting so many projectiles now? It's just a couple before. Like this guy. Okay, there we go. No one down here. I do want to go back to where each ghost is and see if they can they come back. Okay, here's the one that just happened. Get that back. Money. Okay, that went really well. <laughs> um, there should be another one down here somewhere as well, unless. It just disappears when you die, which is entirely possible. Oh god. Drink a potion! Ah! Oh, they do so much damage. Okay, I can just grab the key to the old house and- Oh! Oh, uh, damn it. I was hoping to roll away, but B is also the interact with things button. <sighs> 
Okay, well, I have the key now, so... I do want to get the money back, but I can also just go and build the old house and see what's in there. <laughs> okay. little fox graphic. Pretty adorable. Okay. You there. Dead now. I feel like sneaking past enemies is a bad idea because when you fight someone a bit later on they'll spot you. And then, like, they just swarm you, and there's just too many enemies, and it's bad. <laughs> Get back to those. Okay. I'm guessing I need a shield to fight those guys. Because they just do so much damage, and I just don't have any way to deal with them. Okay, I don't have the offer option anymore, which is interesting. I'm back to being question marks. Okay, but I have the key to this house, so let's just open it up and see what's in there. Not a lot, not a lot. There's a chest. With one money in it. Oh, but I can go this way. Oh, here we go. Something going on here. Uh, I might be able to bomb that, but... Mm, I'll try going this way first. The shield! Yes! With the shield. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Okay. Okay, we've got a door here that I can't open yet, I assume? You can also go this way. It's been about an hour, so I should start wrapping up this video, but I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, as I was informed, like, the deaths in this game are not very punitive. It's not you lose all your money, uh, like it is in many other games that have this same sort of mechanic. It's just a little bit, and it's, it's very manageable in a way that it just doesn't bother me too much, so that, that's nice. Um, is there anything else over here? I can go past this broken tuning fork, go up this way, a chest. Oops. It's a little weird that the action button and the roll button are the same button. I've got like a tooth. Uh, does that increase my attack power or something? I don't know if I've seen that in the manual. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that in the manual yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing it there, so I don't know. It would be nice to have an attack power boost if that's what it does, but I don't know if that's what it does. Feels like it's about the same. In here, some 
treasure. I'm good. Oh, chili peppers. They're in the manual, but I don't know what they do yet. Danger. Okay, I'm gonna go to danger. Let's go this way. And yes, blocking uses some stamina. That makes sense. That's what I expected. It's more or less the Dark Souls combat system. Except that we're not playing Dark Souls. We're playing a cute Zelda game with a fox. <laughs> That's the West Bell, which I assume I want to ring. It was in the manual. A little bit tricky to get to, though. I can't just deflect their attacks, which is a shame. That would have been very helpful. I can block them with my shield, though, which is an improvement on before. Oh, God. <sighs> Little dead fox again. Can you be back pretty far? Uh, I guess not really, because I can go around the waterfall over here in order to get back to where I was, but it, it feels pretty far. Feels like I should have seen a few more bonfires out here in the world, but maybe that's just not how it rolls. Maybe it's just you get more and more shortcuts, but you always start in roughly the same place, that kind of thing. Can I go in here? Is this an entrance? It is an entrance. In here. Uh, it's very green. Dark tomb. Oh, I'm gonna need like a light source or something. Like a, like a lantern, so I can see what I'm doing. I assume this game has a lantern. I think it might have been in the manual. Let's have a look. I'm not seeing it. But one of the magic items might be a lantern? I don't, I don't know. Let's have a will be just over here. Okay, come here, ghosty. I'm not really sure if I want to fight that thing or not, honestly. Anything else over here? Oh. Ugh. Okay, maybe I can lower that bridge? Uh, I, I don't- I don't like the auto turrets. I, I don't like them. They're a, they're a bit much. <laughs> if I had some sort of ranged attack, then that wouldn't be a big deal, but I don't. I do not have a ranged attack. Ah, <sighs> okay. Have a little walkie walk. I like that you can kick the skulls around, it's pretty cute. Oh, these ones are alive, hello. Wasn't really expecting that, but... All I dealt with. Oh, you can kick them in the water and they splash. Oh, that's cute. Not that much of an effect, really. Like, it's not super impressive, but it's cute, and that's what really matters. Ow. I'm having trouble because you only block in one direction, so you have to log onto the correct enemy. Uh, and you don't have a lot of control over what you lock onto, as far as I can tell.
little frustrating that everything respawns every time, but I think I'm getting a little better at it. I think I'm improving. Would definitely like to have a spot that's a bit closer though. It's a bit of a walk. Uh, excuse me, skulls. Excuse me. Just, just your friendly neighborhood fox in a tunic. That's the name of the game, tunic. I made a cute reference. I love the game I'm playing. I like how your stamina appears directly below you when you're shielding as well. Because you need stamina to shield. It's it's very it's very clear. I appreciate it. I feel like I can deal with this now that I have a shield. I just need to do a bit better. Oh god. Oh my god. I'm making sure if I'm supposed to be going this way. <laughs> Oh jeez, yeah. The, uh, the problem I, I tend to have with this kind of game is that because you leave behind your little ghosty when you die, every death immediately motivates you to go back and, and get your ghosty, uh, which means you can't really comfortably quit uh, when you die. Unlike a, a game like, um, uh, say a game that just has saves, like Breath of the Wild for example, uh, you die, you go back to your last save point. You quit the game, you go back to your last save point. It's the same. Uh, there's no, like, real incentive to just keep playing when you die. Uh, if you don't really want to. Whereas here, and m more so in games like Hollow Knight, uh, where it's a much greater punishment if you do happen to die. Uh, but still here, like, y you automatically are uh, pushed to keep going rather than having the opportunity to quit if you want to. Because you're probably going to forget where you left your left your little soul or whatever, for one thing. New manual, new manual. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the, the little uh, sword thing I'm holding is an attack boost. Okay. Uh, I can also get little uh, little fox uh, talismans, I guess, for defense. I can boost my HP with flowers. Do I need to spend those things? Like, do I have to actually go, like, go, go to go to a certain place with them? It looks like I have to go to. Hang on, let me zoom in a bit. Go to whatever that is. And spend them, but I... Hang on, but that that's... Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on, I think, I think I get it. I think I get it. I think the idea is, you collect them, then you go to one of these shrines, and you spend them in order to apply a bonus to your power. I think that's how it works. Okay, okay, I think I understand. Okay. This bridge, I think, takes me back to somewhere a bit earlier and a bit safer, so... I, I want to go back to the tower and see if I can test this out. So, see if I can get there safely. Yes, I can, super easily. Fairly an inconvenience. So, you go back to one of the saved statues, or, uh, I guess, bonfires, and you, s you bring up the menu while you're here, and yeah, you can offer this to increase your attack stat by by two, by one, to make it attack two. Okay. Okay, I understand now. That's what offering does. Okay, so now, yeah, attack two. Okay. 
And if I do it to the other one, my potion will be upgraded. Uh, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to offer again, but that's alright. Yeah, see, attack two. And now if I offer one of these, it'll make my potion level two. Okay, so you collect these little upgrade relics, and then you have to uh, present them to these little towers, and, that, and that's how you actually upgrade your stats. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And that explains why my attack didn't seem to be any better, and why my potion didn't seem to be any better, because they weren't. <laughs> but now they are. Very nice. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it for this video, now that I've figured out some of the game's basic mechanics with the help of reading the enclosed instruction booklet. <laughs> uh, this is Tunic. Uh, a very cute, uh, very fun, quite hard, but there are options to make it a lot more accessible if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, quite hard, uh, sort of, I guess it's basically a Zelda game, with a really nice isometric aesthetic. Um, and some, some souls in influence, but not really enough to be a huge problem, I guess. It, de it depends on how you feel about that kind of game. Uh, it's definitely a lot more forgiving in terms of, like, if you happen to lose your previous, uh, echo or whatever, rather than getting back to it without dying. You only lose a little bit of money. Uh... Let me see. Yeah, you like you lose around twenty money, and like I have hundreds of monies, and that's not that's not a big deal. Uh, whereas again, like I mentioned, in Dark Souls, in Hollow Knight, in I think Blasphemous as well, you lose all the money you're carrying when you die. It, it's stuck with the ghost. If you don't get to your ghost, if you die beforehand, it's just gone, and that's real bad. <laughs> this one is a lot more forgiving, and. I do wish it had, like, a mode that basically said don't lose money when you die, rather than just a mode that stops you from dying. Uh, because, like, that removes the incentive to go back to your ghost all the time without necessarily removing the combat challenge, if that makes sense. So, like, a mode that, that's, like, uh, no echo mode or something like that. I think they called it echoes. Let me just go back to the booklet and see. Echo of self, yeah, see? Uh, hang on, why did I point at the screen? You can't see see where I'm pointing. Uh, zoom, zoom in? There we go. Yeah, see? Echo of self. So, I think a mode that just disables that. So, when you die, you go back to your last bonfire, you don't lose anything. Uh, would be helpful for people who have, um, essentially like a compulsive personality, I suppose, where, uh, the game, if the game pushes you to keep playing, then you can't stop. Because there are a lot of people who have problems with that, and if it were tweaked just a little bit, uh, then you would have, like, you wouldn't have the incentive to immediately go back and make sure you recover your Echo as fast as possible, uh, to avoid the risk of potentially dying and losing anything. Since the amount of money is very small, I think it's still a smaller incentive than it otherwise would be, uh, but I think the option to turn this off would be really helpful and not impact the game that much. Just ascent, like, because you're still respawning at the same spot, you still have to redo the same stuff, it's just... You're not pushed quite as hard to do the same stuff again, if that makes sense. Um... I do, I do love that the accessibility options are there, that you have a mode that disables losing stamina, uh, which simplifies a lot of things and makes it a lot easier to do rollings type combat and stuff like that without being... infuriated, uh, and if you prefer, like, uh, for example, Dead Cells is a game that has a lot of, like, rolling around the dodge enemies kind of kind of combat, uh, and that game just doesn't have stamina, so, like, being able to basically switch off the stamina is a nice feature. Um, but I think just having pure invulnerability is the only, essentially, uh, reduction to deaths, if that makes sense, is maybe a, a little bit of a too big a sledgehammer, maybe. I think it's a good option. I'm not saying remove it, but I'm saying it would be nice to have an extra option that effectively uh, just removes this mechanic from the game. If it's something that you, as a as a player, have like a personality problem with or whatever, uh, it's just something I'm thinking about. <laughs> um, apart from that, this game is delightful. Um, I, I I really really love the idea 
of collecting the instruction booklet for a game as you play it and gradually <laughs> that's, that's so beautiful uh it's also adorably designed there's some really nice art in here and it definitely feels like um like as, as a kid we had a lot of snes games we didn't have a lot of manuals for snes games but we did have the link to the past one and it feels a lot like i'm reading the link to the past manual right now which is a really good feeling to have because that game is fantabulous <laughs> uh, and yeah, like learning how all the mechanics work as you play by finding the missing pieces of the instruction booklet, which is super, super cute. It's just, uh, it's, it's absolutely delightful. Uh, I do think this page might be a slight problem because, again, for accessibility reasons, sometimes people need buttons arranged differently. There is software you can do that with, uh, like if you want to remap your controller to have different buttons do different things. You can get third-party software that does that, but I don't think there's a compelling reason for the game not to have that feature, uh, because all of the operations we're looking at here are things that could be remapped. Uh, it's not as big a problem as it would be, because uh, a large portion of the controller is map any item to this button, but it's still something that I think uh, would need would, would be nice to have improved. Uh, I also think it's a little odd that these sections don't tick off as you do them. Like, I understand that it's instruction manual and maybe people don't want to draw into it, but it... Heck, maybe that does happen. Maybe I'll find, like, a pencil or something and then my fox will start ticking off sections I've done, which would be super cute. Um... Oh, yeah, look, look. Come on, zoom in. Dark Tomb has a little picture of a lantern, so I do need a lantern to get through there. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, um... My complaints about this game are extremely minor. Uh, I think... I think it's an extremely playable game that I'm going to have a, a wonderful time with. I think the art is gorgeous. Uh... I have a few minor suggestions for extra accessibility options. Beyond that, I think it's just a wonderful experience and I'm having a wonderful time with it. Uh, uh. <sighs> also, look at this cute fox. It's so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, that's Tunic or Tunic or Fox that has a sword game, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a game that I really like, and I'm really glad I picked it up and started playing it, and making me happy. And if you enjoy Zelda games in general, uh, this is probably something you'll enjoy. Pause, actually, pause. Hang on, let me find someone with enemies. Uh, because one of the complaints people have about Dark Souls uh, is the game does not pause. This one does. That's nice. Um, because, you know, it's supposed to be like, you can't go into your inventory in the middle of the game and, and mess around without expecting to be killed, basically. Uh, and I think, I think this menu, like the switching items thing, might not pause. Yeah, it doesn't. But there is an actual pause, so I'm, hap I'm fine with that, basically. I I'm not bothered by the fact that uh, this doesn't pause, because you can still pause the game if you need to pause the game for whatever reason. Also, this is so charming. It's just, it's just absolutely adorable. Oh, I get it. Oh, look, look. It's like this. It's like yeah, I'm playing it on this old CRT with very low res television, and then I'm looking at the manual in front of that. Oh, oh, that's so charming. Oh, yeah. I can just flip through the booklet. I wonder if this is a hint that I can like carry the bolts back and get and get them hit get them to hit hit the uh bolt launching thingy. Like if I like with proper timing. It's like if I can that would be super duper helpful. Uh but I don't know if that's the case. Oh jeez, this game is so cute. Anyway, um yeah, so that's that's tunic. Uh as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it is available for Windows and Mac OS. 
uh, on like Steam and Itch and Epic and I think those are the three main platforms. It's also available on the Xbox series of consoles, uh, the X-Bone and also the whatever the new one after that is. The, the one with the nonsense names even worse than X-Bone. <laughs> Uh, as far as I know, it's not coming to any platforms other than that, but it's possible they'll be doing, like, a PlayStation or a Switch port as well. Um, it's not like the controls would need tweaking, like, it's, it's standard game controls, so it's very possible. Um, but apart from that, that's all i got to say, really. Uh, this game is Tunic, and I am having a wonderful time with it. The music is beautiful, the visuals are beautiful, it's a lot of fun. Uh... This is just the most charming thing I've I've seen in a long time. <laughs> I mean, I mean, chicory exists, but like, this is a very charming thing to see in a video game. It's, just, it's not the most because because chicory exists. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is making me real happy. I don't know how long this game is. Um, I believe it is quite long. I've seen people saying it's taken them like. It's like 72 hours of constant play just to finish it. Uh, I don't know if that's with all like side stuff or if that's just the base game, but... Uh... It is, it is extremely charming and I think... Like, I assume there's more stuff than they're showing on this screen here. Uh, I, because it's like this is beginning the adventure, here's the bells you have to ring. I'm guessing that after you ring the bells, there's a whole lot more, but even if it's only that, like, it's taken me quite a while to just do that part, so... It's possible there's quite a lot more afterwards. I don't really know what to expect, but... It's it's very cute, it's making me very happy. Look, look at that, look at that, look how cute that is. Look at that happy little fox, thinking about all the cool items you can get in this game. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, I've tried to wrap up the video twice now, so I'm just gonna say, yeah, this is Tunic. Uh, I would highly recommend playing it if this is the kind of game that is up your alley, if it looks fun to you, then definitely give it a shot. Uh, there are some minor accessibility things. I might bring them up on the Finji Discord and see if there's a chance of getting some things tweaked, just because I think that would be delightful. Uh, but as it stands, this game is real, real good, and I have essentially no qualms recommending it. Uh, with the sole caveat that if the uh, going back to get your Echo thing is going to be a problem for the type of, I guess, personality you have, then that might be something to be careful about. <sighs> Very charming game. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye! <laughs> Uh, how do I stop the recording again? Uh, like, so?